and welcome to this week's edition of the Horror Debate. I'm Michael Mandy. He's Rowdy Jeff. I am indeed, and this week we are doing The Haunting from 1963. We're talking the original, and you know what? You might not believe in ghosts, but you can't deny terror. Is that not right, Mike? <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> this movie's from 1963, and it stars Julie Harris, and also you might recognize Lois Maxwell, the original Miss or Moneypenny. Not. Miss Moneypenny from the Bond film. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, what'd you think, Mike? I mean, what, what are we looking at here? Okay, what we're looking at is the basic plot of this film. It's it's in black and white, folks. Uh, oh, that ruined it right there. Yeah, I know. Oh, Sorry. No, I'm um, kidding. This film is considered a classic, though. We had to check it out. Okay, the basic plot of this film is, you know, an old haunted house was built a long time ago, and everyone associated with it eventually died or bad things happened to them, and people say they're haunted, and so a scientist brings a team of a few people in to spend a few nights there and try to find a ghost. Exactly, exactly. And you know, this this is the epitome of what I love about the older movies, okay? Now, you know me, and I'm not exactly the biggest fan of black and white no, in the world. No, it's not. Okay? Anything I see in black and white, I pretty much hit the, the channel changer, okay? This movie, completely worth the time it took to view it. I <laughs> thought this was well-constructed storytelling. Yeah. From beginning to end. And the black and white helps the film because it creates all those shadows. I mean, when people say black and white, the film is really not black and white. It's a million shades of gray. You know what my daughter blacks. called it? I just have to say this. I watched this with my six-year-old daughter. Okay. And you know what she called it? Scariest film she saw? It's gray and white. Gray said, and white. She said, it's not black and white, Dad. Yeah. It's gray and white. That's yeah. what she told me. All right. How could I argue with that logic? You can't. I can't. She's right. It's gray and white. Yeah. And, and a lot of shadows. I mean, uh, the perfect thing, is this film looked so much better than the color remake they made a few years ago, didn't it? You know, uh, it, it's hard for me to even call that, that remake a remake because it was almost like a completely different story with just a kind of like a few things kind of in common uh -huh. with this one. It, after watching the original again, it, it just... You totally see where where they were good, trying to go with the remake, but didn't just it didn't work. No, it didn't work. The remake it, it, was horrible. This kind of feels like a really this felt like a fresh story to me. To it, be honest yeah. with you, it really felt fresh and exciting to watch. Um, I thought, you know, for an older, I mean, a 1963 movie. They really had it going on. Yeah. They, they knew how to make you feel the tension. Especially because movies... The heebie-jeebies, okay. as in, I like in, to call them. In today's world, you'll probably watch it and think it was very boring. But you got to remember, 1963, kind of like the, the Alfred Hitchcock thing. In his day, these mm -hmm. things were revolutionary and amazing. And right. people went, wow. Nowadays, we have copied all the things that made those films original. So now they're commonplace and boring. Mm -hmm. I, I Well... Yeah, but you know, you look at the acting from top to bottom in this movie. Mm -hmm. Look at the acting. I don't think there was one weak link, in the, especially in the main character set. Um, there, there was really not a weak link. The, 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 just the yeah. four, you know, the two mm -hmm. males and the two ladies. Yeah, Richard they, they Johnson were, and, and Julie Harris. They were brilliant. Yeah, they were brilliant. And and I didn't know it, but I guess the lead guy, when I listened to the commentary, he was up for the James Bond gig. Yeah, you want to know something, Claire Bloom, the Theo. I mean, seriously, this is 1963, and she was talking about how she had her own apartment, and she kind of liked right. girls, and I mean, she was hinting at, at that at lesbo kind of thing. Yeah. You didn't do that in 63, right. and she was wearing black leather skirts, and right. you know, she was a, a, a modern, you know, woman there. Yep, yep. <laughs> I caught that too, but I couldn't go there. I was with my six-year-old daughter, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, no, no, th this movie okay. was totally worth it. I mean, and and I, like I said, not being a fan of the really older movie set, I got to give this one complete props. I mean, it did everything right i thought there maybe there it was a little bit too verbose in certain areas where verbose? you know meaning that they were trying to like put too much dialogue where it didn't really need to be uh -huh. i mean you got the gist of what they were saying yet they wanted to explain it to you for 20 minutes uh -huh. you know and, and and for me i'm like okay move on you know get get something going here when i first saw this movie way back when about 20 years ago on creature features i thought this was one of the greatest haunted house yeah. movies i had ever seen it is and it then i saw it again 10 years ago because i said i gotta remember that scene hold my hand remember oh yeah oh, and the door knock. i was just freaking out yeah. again but you know what in today now that i'm a grown-up and i'm watching it again you know there's some things i like about it but I guess as a grown-up, Julie Harris's whining was starting to get to me. Did you even drop the plot on us on this thing, Mike? Yes, I did. You did? Did yes. you tell? Did you tell our audience what the heck we're talking about yes, here? Yes, I did. About the all these guys going into this house to, yes. to study the paranormal. Yes, I did. Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> um, uh, put the beer down, Jeff. Put the. Beer 
<laughs> you know, okay, because really, I mean, for the the main four characters really carried this movie. There were some other characters, but but the main four, the two mm-hmm. gentlemen and the two ladies, were the ones that really carried the film. And I just wanted to say that you know it didn't get boring. It, no. I mean, they really held it together. Um, I thought that the uh, the male lead, especially, he was fantastic. Richard Johnson, great job, uh-huh. great job. And That's the, just it. In in the horror film, so many characters do stupid things just to continue the movie because otherwise if they didn't do a stupid thing the movie would be over right this movie no one really did anything stupid the only except uh, I, I kind of still don't understand what Lois Maxwell was doing at the top of the stairs <laughs> Uh, at the end of the movie, yeah, there were a that couple of open holes, and I thought, um, and and but I do, I, I want to say this, I was impressed with the remastering job that was done on this DVD. Mm-hmm. Uh, the widescreen presentation was flawless. I mean, it looked great. It looked like it looked like it could have been like a, a, a modern movie that that was put on DVD. It was that good. If it had color, it probably would have looked that good. I'm, wow. I'm not kidding you. Very very nice yeah. surround effects used very very well. Sparingly, but well. Mm-hmm. When there and, was, and even the music yeah. was sparingly. Yes. I mean, in that scene when when Theo and and Nell were in the bed, mm-hmm. and the doorknob was turning, any music whatsoever would have ruined the yeah. whole scene. Yeah. But you got to admit. For those five minutes, you didn't know anything in the world existed except what was on that. You screen. mentioned the uh, the hand holding scene, and oh, I, I just yes. I just had to say that I when I was sitting there, I was expecting Hootie to come on singing "Hold My Hand." I'm just kidding, you, but I just it just it, you know you know the way I think. It just crossed my mind while I was watching that scene, Jeff? like Hootie. <laughs> Jeff, do me a favor. Don't ever sing again. Don't ever sing again. Okay, I won't. But you know, hey. And you know what? The word hootie should not be in these, any movie review. Oh, there's been plenty. It's in plenty of your movie reviews. I can tell you that. Hooters. Those are good. Hooters. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, you know, like I say, for a black and white movie, and I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to bash them, but they're, they're typically not for me, but this this really nailed it. Uh, I, I'm going to give it actually three stars. Yeah. it's. I would have given it four stars, but like I said, watching it again, and, and just Nell was just starting to get on my nerves. You're not going to agree with me in like every review, are you? I never do. Okay, it's very good, rare. Good, but good. Uh, yeah, it's like, definitely you know, a three-star Because like, I'm getting film. worried now because we, we've cut like two tonight. And, yeah, and well, we're both uh, picking some good films. We are. We yeah. are. And, and that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. This genre really needs... I mean, right now, and, and I heard somebody say this the other night and I can't remember who it was. I believe it was John Landis. I was watching an interview with John Landis uh-huh. and I believe he said that in the year 2007, the reason that horror is coming back is because the world's so screwed up. And people are looking for that release. Mm. You know what I mean? And it made sense to me because, yeah, you're seeing a whole bunch of like new and, 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 and different horror popping up. And, and I, I, I'm liking it, but I'm kind of not liking the reasoning behind it. You know? I'm liking it. I think the reason why is because horror films, you don't need a huge budget. And uh, movies are getting to be so crazy and so yeah, expensive nowadays. Yeah. Look, let's just make a cheap little film for $2 million. Of course it'll bring us, make us money on but the But think about the stuff. escapism factor yeah. in, in horror flicks. I mean, you, you can watch some pretty brutal stuff, but you can still kind of laugh it off and say, hey, those were cool effects, you know. It kind of takes you away from the reality of the situation where we are right now in the year 2007 uh, with, you know, world events and things of that nature. Um, you know, horror is a great escapism genre. Yeah. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot of this pop. And plus, of course, it's profitable now, and people are wanting yeah. to go see this stuff. And uh, you're right, budgets have something to do with it. Uh, you can do a great horror flick for for ten mil. Uh, you, hey, Blair Witch Project, you can do it for ten thousand. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so I mean, I, I think that uh, we're in a really exciting time in this genre, and uh, you know, it's it's nice to be able to go back though and see movies that were done uh, with class. Like this yeah. one was, and, and kind of go, wow, you know. I mean, for 1963, I mean, that was that was several years before I was even born. Yeah. That was pretty killer. I, I really got into it. I really liked it. And we're gonna do the the review on the on the remake, so to speak. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it's not that I hated that movie. I'll say that right now. It's not that I hated it. I just don't think it was really. It didn't feel like a remake to me. It kind of felt like a whole different trip. So what they should have done on the remake was not call it a remake and just change the names of the characters yeah. and call it an original movie. Exactly. Because, I mean, this has a lot of similarities to the Legend of Hell House. Well, they mentioned the Legend of Hell House several times in there. No, they mentioned Hill House. Oh, right. right. You're so right. Not Hell House. Hill House. You're right. right. You're right. The name of this movie's house is called Hill House. Right, right, and right. And that's probably what inspired Richard Matheson to write Hell yeah. House. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, this, the plots are fairly similar, but... You know, two original films, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Solid stuff. Yep. Solid stuff and, stuff and definitely a three-star movie. Check it out late at night with your date. Or 
check it out late night with yourself. I mean, it's <laughs> it's, it's really it's really the kind of movie that you know. In my opinion, I don't know if a date would sit through this, Mike. Um, yeah. You know, it's it, it I, it's almost like you know you kind of got to watch this one on your own. I think. You really? Know? I don't know. It's, I don't find this to be a date movie kind of thing. You know, I, I find this to be kind of like you got to ingest this. Okay. You got to take it well, in. And it kind is kind of talky. It is kind of talky. It's talky, and and it, there's a, like I said, they get really verbose in places where I thought it was so overkill, but it didn't really kill the movie. It yeah. just it's just like come on, let's move it along. You this movie I mean? definitely has mood. A lot definite of mood. mood. Definite mood. I love. I, I just mood. want to mention this. I loved the decorations in the house. Yeah. I thought that. They yeah, that killer. whole house was awesome. That was wasn't killer. It? <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted what to move set, in, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if it was a set or it was a real location. No, it was a set. I listened yeah. to the commentary, oh, yeah. and they were talking about how they designed all that stuff. Yeah. It was killer, killer stuff, yeah. man. Great, great looking, great vibe. Yep. Good film. All right, check it out. I'm Michael Mandy. He's Rowdy Jeff. We'll talk to you next week at the Horror Debate.